Is that it? <sighs> Hi and welcome to Extronical. Um, if you watched the last episode, we had a few sound problems, so I've got a new mic, so hopefully they won't be as bad this time. Uh, in this episode of the Space Invaders um, system build, uh, we're going to look at the player missile and the collisions that obviously happened with the player missile with the aliens. Uh, so, first of all, we do, we've got the new code here, and I'm going to compile it and upload it. Um, and we'll just have a quick look at it and see um, how it works and then we'll go through the actual programming of it so if we just compile and upload so I'll bring up the um, Arduino now on the screen and we're just compiling so we should get uploading yep yeah. and they've stopped moving as it's uploading the new code and there we go, so now obviously we had movement last time, so we can go right, we can go left, and also we should now be able to fire, and if I could hit one, yeah, destroy an alien or two, and note that as I'm destroying them, they're not coming down the screen until um, one of them gets to the edge, which is program we did last time, so we'll just let these get to the edge now, and they should drop down, there we go, and yeah, so it's all working, if I can actually aim straight. So we're gonna look at the code for that. So I'll take that off screen. And first thing we notice at line 23, just down here. So line 23, uh, we've set a height for the invaders of eight pixels high. All the invader graphics are eight pixels high. So that makes it kind of super simple for us. Um, we're just gonna set one constant and it's eight pixels high and that's what every invader is. Um, and we'll look further down. We've got some more defines here for the missile. So look at these three, we've introduced these three. Um, so again, mostly graphics ones, have got the missile height uh, in pixels, so it's four pixels high, it's one pixel wide, and has a speed of four. Should really probably put a comment on there that um, the, uh, it, the bigger the number, the faster. And that's because um, it's actually how many pixels it's going to move per every sort of game click. So every time the game updates positions and alien positions, anything like that, it'll update the missile and it will basically move it four pixels upwards every time. So if that was two, it would move two pixels at a time, it would move half as fast. If it was eight, it would move twice as fast. It becomes a danger if it says it too fast, it'll actually just not even collide with aliens because it's moving too big a chunk at a time. So it's a balance to have there. Four seems to work well and you always get a collision with an alien if it actually collides with them. Um, and that works well, so don't alter that too much, but you can have a play around to what the effects are. And then we come to another line we've just set here. Uh, so we had active last time, sorry, we had active last time, which is zero. And now for all game objects, they can be destroyed. So the alien can be marked to destroyed, which means obviously it's not going to get displayed on screen, so it effectively disappears. And the uh, missile can be destroyed, and that will effectively disappear. Um, there'll be some graphics for the missile, which I'm not going to go over at all now. We've done graphics in previous episode. Um, we've introduced a new missile um, variable here of type game object struct. If you remember, that is basically just some coordinates. So it's just basically just missile just has an X and Y coordinates taken from there. Uh, nothing's changed in setup. Um, nothing's changed in the in in the loop. But the physics routine, which is just here has changed. We've introduced two more lines, which are these. We've got a missile control, which is going to control the missile, and we've got a collision check. So if we look for, um, oh, before we do that, sorry, we look at player control, which is just under here. Player control controls the firing of the missile. So last week we had these, or last episode, sorry, we had these, um, which was controlling the positioning of the player. So you press right or left, it went left or right of the tank. And then we've got a read of the fire button, and if it's zero, that means we pressed it. And then if the missile is not currently active, so it's not already doing something on screen, moving up the screen. So we haven't got a missile on screen basically. Then we're going to do this code. So the missile's expedition will be equal to the player's expedition. So we'll do this bit, just highlight that. So the player's expedition plus the width of the tank divided by two. And that basically will set the, the missile expedition to the middle of the tank. 
where the actual cannon is, which is what we want. And the Y position of the missile put us to the player Y. So it's originating from the middle of the tank and where the tank is. So it's going to fire it from the tank, basically. And then we set it to active. Otherwise, it's not going to get displayed on screen. And nothing much is going to happen there. So that missile is now active and ready to be displayed and ready to be have its position updated with the missile control, which is just next. So with the missile control, if the missile is active, we're going to do something. If it's not, if it's been destroyed, for example, um, we're not going to do anything. There's no point doing anything. It's not active. It's not on screen. There's no missile to update. So if it's active, then we'll set its missile Y position to, if you look at that little minus just there, it means we're going to take away from the Y position the missile speed, which remember we set it earlier to four. So it's going to subtract four basically from missile Y position. So it's going to move it up a bit. And then if the Y position of the missile plus its height, so we're looking at the bottom of the missile, if the bottom of the missile basically has gone less than zero, which means it's gone off the top of the screen. If it has done, so if the missile has gone off the top of the screen, we'll mark it as destroyed so that the player can then fire another missile. And then looking down, alien control we covered last time. And then we get the check collision. Now this looks fairly same pointless but we've got a, a routine called check collisions and all it does is call one other routine which is missile and alien collisions which you can just see just below um which may seem fairly pointless it's just the fact that obviously when i've written the code there are other collision detections that are going to go in here so there we i can't remember now where many there is maybe two or three that are going to go into this routine and be called after we've called this one which is why at the moment it just seems a bit sparse just calling this routine so if we move down and I'm sorry my voice sounds a little bit different, got a little bit of a cough or cold or something. Um, but if we move down, missile and alien collisions, all we're doing again, we've seen these, um, that was once a bit of tidying up, there we go. We've seen this before, we've got um, this loop within the loop, which is basically going to go around every single alien. And for every single alien, it's going to look, are you active? So if an alien's active, it's still on screen, it's still an active alien. Then we're going to have a look at it and see if it's done um, a collision perhaps. If it's not active, it's been destroyed, then it won't get any further. There's no point checking a destroyed alien if it's collided with anything. It doesn't technically really exist anymore. So as long as it's active, we'll go into this line. And then we say, is the missile active? Because if there's no active missile, then it's not going to, can't possibly collide with anything. So the, the alien has to be active and the missile has to be active. And then, yeah, okay, if they're both active, we'll make a check um, and see if they... Um, collide with something and the way we do that we've got a line here which I'll just bring more on screen so we can just fit it all on um, we can't quite but I'll, sc I'll scroll across when I need to but basically we've got an if statement that says if there's a collision between the missile and the alien so and you can see the line doesn't go on forever I'll just scroll that a little bit for you you can see it's just ending there so if there's a collision between two things so this routine will check a collision between two objects that you supply to it. I'm supplying the missile object and I'm supplying the alien object. And we also supply the width and height of the missile and the width and height. Let's scroll that along a bit. The width and height of the alien as well as the invader. Um, usually, and if you go onto the blog post about this, because I always write the blog post going through all these routines first, and you'll find a link down below. Usually, um, in this collision routine, you just pass a missile object and an alien object. That would be it. Just two parameters passed. Because we're trying to save memory on this, because this uh, system isn't over blessed with memory, because it's a little microcontroller, um, we, we try to save memory on, on these objects that we're passing in. It just has the X and Y coordinates on the missile object and this odd object for the alien there. So look at that, that's the alien object. We're just passing the coordinates in and basically that's just coordinates as well. They don't contain any width and height information. Usually, I would include that in anything I'm writing. So you just pass the missile, it would have the coordinate positions and the width and height detail in there as well. But we, because it's got a small amount of memory, um, particularly with the alien, um, not everything needs to have that width and height position stored in the coordinate structure. And it saves us a little bit of memory, not much, but a bit. And we're a little bit short at the end of the, um, the final uh, piece of code for this um, uh, Invaders project. We've used quite a lot of dynamic memory and we were getting close to running out. So where we could save it, we did. So that's why we're having a bit slightly overcomplicated passing in where we're passing in the coordinates, then the width, then the height. And again, for the alien, the coordinates, then the width, then the height. 
So basically, if this collision return is true, then we've hit. They have collided. Missile and air have collided. If they have, we well, mark the alien as destroyed. And of course, we need to mark the missile as destroyed, then it can be refired. And the alien then on the display routine will basically disappear because it undisplays aliens that are active. So that'll make the alien disappear. No explosion yet. That's in the next episode. So if we come down to the collision, you might expect it to be complicated. It kind of looks like it, but it's it's just one line. It is this one single line, and it returns the result of this Boolean operation. There are four, basically, things going on here. Four conditions that must be met. There's this condition. So if the object 1x position plus its width, so we're looking at the far right object, is more than object 2 uh, x position, and if this is true and this is true so that's three conditions so far that need to be true and the final one if this is true so if all these are true basically they are overlapping those two objects are overlapping which is a collision so if they if that is all true then we'll return it we'll return that it'll all be true that'll come out as true that that building expression and it'll return true if any one of these things if this or that one or that one etc if any one of them are false it will return false it means you're not going to overlap now that can look hard to imagine in your head uh, looking at what that's right um, so what I did on the actual blog post I created a little interactive um, demo uh, on the web page where you can control one object move it about and see how these different things become true when you're actually doing that and we'll flip to that now just one minute okay so this is the blog post um, that we've just brought up from the website so if you click the link below you get to this and this goes through like I always do I write this blog post for the video this is going through all what we've just done and then we come down to the interactive demo for the collisions so there we go so we've got this little interactive demo for collisions we've got a grid so We've got like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 going across in the x direction and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. in the y position going down. So we've got all these pixels on screen. This is object 1, that's object 2. And we can move them about. So I can move object 1. Well, I can only move object 1 in fairness. Object 2 will stay static. Object 1, you can move these controls here. So you can see, putting it right to the edge, its x position is 0. If I move it one pixel across, it's exposition is now one which makes sense it's got a width so this is the exposition of the first pixel and this is the exposition of the last pixel which would be just in this corner here so that's is it, is it position 10 so if you look at here we've got the code we've just seen on screen if object 1.x plus width etc so this is saying if the far right of the object which is this so if we look object 1's exposition is um, is 1 add on the width which is 10 so we add on the width of that object it will give us an x position of 11 which is uh, evaluated there for us so object 1.x plus its width gives us 11 which is right so 1 it's given a pixel position of 11 there is that more than object 2's x position well object 2's x position is 15 so is 11 more than 15 well no it's not so that's in black and that's false however we've got something in red here we can see this is evaluating as true is the object one's x position so that's one so if object so that's one there because that one there is its x position less than object two's x position plus the width of object two so if you look the exhibition object two's x position is 15 plus its width again is 10 will give us a value of 25 so is object one's x less than that well one less than 25 yes it is so that's true so you can move along checking and seeing what code so we're coming to where we we are overlapping if i press again we will overlap in the x direction so that's what happens there so yeah we are overlapping in the x direction now both x's are showing true we've got a proper overlap in the x direction but we're not overlapping anywhere in the y and we could carry right across and all those x positions are overlapping so they're returning true that's all true but we're just failing on this one thing here because we're not getting an overlap in the y direction so go along go along go along and then off and you can see this one now fails but let's bring it back on so we're overlapping there if i press down 
then we should get everything. Well, it'll be an overlap. We should get a collision. Let's just test. Yeah, it's true. We're overlapping and this is returning true. So we've got a collision. I'll just put it back up again. So you can see it's satisfying both these. So we can tell we're overlapping in the X plane. And it's satisfying this one where object Y, so object 1Y, which is currently um, 5, is it less than object 2's Y, which is 24, plus its height? So that would be uh, 15. So is it less? Oh, yes, it is. It is. It's above there. It's less. However, is object 1's height, object 1's Y, plus the height of it, is that value, which is 34, is that more than object 2's Y? Well, more than object 2 is y um no sorry i'm confused there it's 10 is it more than 10 no it's not but if i press it one more time you can see that will go to 25 and so press that uh sorry not 25 i'm looking at the exposition that will go to 11 so it was just go back and that was a y position of 10 go down that will become 11 11 is more than that object ones um y position and we've got that overlap and everything's true. So as again, that's available. If you click it down below, you can have a look at that and you can play around with it. You can see we're still overlapping. When we come out the bottom, we're no longer overlapping. And we can go right across, overlapping, and they will all be true. So again, in the code can look a bit complicated, but have a play with that. Look at the numbers. Um, watch what's happening with the code down below. And um, I should help you to understand it. I must point out this is a simple collision detection, but having said that, it's used in a vast majority of games. Um, just overlapping uh, on the simple X and Y and width is used an enormous amount of times. And it's a very simple one line piece of uh, code that does it. So I say, have a look on the website, have a play around with that, and we'll just go back to the code now and finish off. So once we've done the collision, there's not an awful lot else to go here. So we'll scroll down and have a quick look. So update display will be changed ever so slightly. Um, the line at the bottom here, uh, if missile status is active, so we've got an active missile and we'll draw it here with this line here, which we've discussed before. In the initialized play routine, we initialize the missile as destroyed. So basically we'll be allowed to fire one. So it's currently destroyed. It's not, there's no current active missile. Um, and that rounds it off. That is all there is for this episode. It's mostly talking about that collision detection. detection. Uh, in the next episode, we'll put in the explosion graphics when the aliens actually are hit. And we'll also put in a score. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And see you next time.